Well, this is a book that needs to be written, and I'm very glad that Kim McGrath has written it. Um, there is a, a ton of research that's gone into this. This is not a piece of work that's just occurred from uh, visits and association with Timor Leste. This is research, painstaking research, over a long period of time. And I'm very grateful when I was able to give some advice to, to Kim, who was doing her PhD in this similar area, uh, the advice was to get the book out first and the PhD second and I apologise to Monash University and um, the scholarship there and the work that you're undertaking, I'm sure that's probably caused some difficulty but this is better than any PhD, I can tell you. Um, and it's, um, it's, a, it's a great account and it's a great account which, because it's revealing and it actually reveals that the, um, the issue with oil and gas is not a recent incarnation, it's an issue that's been going on uh, pre the, the Second World War and has been going on for a long time and it's really coloured really the Australian relationship with Timor-Leste right through that period. And we've seen a consistency of advice as, as Kim has pointed out in her book from uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade which has been resolute and consistent in its advice and there is a telling chapter in here where Kim goes through uh, a definition of what is Australia's national interest. And the perception from the Department of Foreign Affairs revealed here is that Australia's national interest has been writ large in relation to its relationship to Indonesia as the primacy of the relationships between Australia and, and now the Timor-Leste. And that has governed everything. But what is more revealing and more interesting is that uh, Kim has demonstrated through the work that she's undertaken that once on this course there was nothing that was going to stop the Department of Foreign Affairs from, um, from its consistent advice and from uh, there was no chance. Even when Timor-Leste became an independent nation through a referendum auspiced by the United Nations, even then the advice did not change and it did not change largely because they wanted to protect what they saw as the Australian national interest wrongly sought. Um, and if you like, this reads in some way, uh, it's certainly not fiction, it's certainly based in research and scholarship and fact, but it reads like fiction. If you had described that Australia would treat a near neighbour this way, uh, over a long period of time you would say, no, this can't be done, this is not Australia, it cannot do this. Australia could not exempt only 2% of its territorial waters from a permanent boundary, which it has done in this case, in the boundary in the Sunrise Field, which uh, Kim uh, writes about in this book as well. Only 2% has been exempted where a special treaty was undertaken, and Australia could not, in forging that treaty, you would think, under the auspice of an Oz aid contract to upgrade the Prime Minister's office, bug the walls of the Prime Minister's office and have preferred information, effectively industrial espionage in the, in the determination of what would be the treaty which would govern that 2% which was exempted uh, from the permanent boundary. You would not believe that that would occur, it has occurred. Um, and that has been exposed effectively through the work that Kim has undertaken. You would not believe that Australia could describe contiguous with its uh, landmass a continental shelf which is submerged in about 100 metres of water um, and goes to a larger drop in the ditch between uh, the edge of the continental shelf and the Timor Sea and Australia effectively says well this is a 50-50 resource because even though the resource is 350 kilometres from Australia's shore and 150 kilometres from Timor's shore, Timor they should there have the total coverage of this because 200 kilometres from your shore should be your territorial rights to mine and extract. Uh, but because Australia has argued a continental shelf issue, that the land doesn't end with the land, it goes for a continental shelf and the water effectively becomes the land, this sounds like fiction, doesn't it? This is true. This was argued consistently in the compulsory conciliation in the United Nations conciliation of the law of the sea that was the opening argument from Australia to argue why it was 50-50 it was because the water was contiguous with the land and we counted where we needed to and therefore it's 50-50 from the last bit of it. Now you would not believe that that was the case but it has been the case and this has been effectively exposed and um, in the 
in the Crossing the Line book by Kim McGrath, Australia's Secret History in the Timor Sea. Uh, thankfully, there is some opportunity for redress. Um, I think there's an apt quote here in the book and it goes to the conclusion and the very last comment that you make in your conclusion, Kim. Um, the Ark, and it's by Martin Luther King Jr. The Ark of Mo the Moral Universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Well, that is certainly the case when it comes to the, um, uh, the, the, the sovereignty, if you like, of Timor-Leste, because Timor-Leste people see this as a sovereign issue. Yes, they have achieved sovereignty through the auspice of the United Nations vote and the referendum which they attended and the independent country has been formed, but they haven't got true sovereignty until they control not only the land but control the water and the territorial waters which they own. Every other country would expect that that would be the case and Timor-Leste expects that would be the case as well. And what this shows that this has been a long, long term effort by Australia to subvert the Timor-Leste people from having what is their just and fair rights. And that is access to their territorial waters like every other country in the world has, like every other neighbour has in Australia, like New Zealand has with a permanent boundary, a median point between Australia and those countries not afforded to Timor-Leste and they've had to fight like mad to get it and hopefully this is a, another contribution in that fight um, and another contribution to uh, prove that the justice of the case for Timor-Leste, um, the sovereignty which is required for that uh, just case for Timor-Leste, wouldn't it be better for Timor-Leste to control its own desti destiny than to be a mendicant state at, uh, at the behest of other nations because it doesn't have the resources and capacity to develop itself and therefore to put into its own nation. So, um, uh, Kim, Congratulations. I know this has been a, a long-term project of yours, but it's a project done extremely well. It is a great read. It's a must-read. Um, and um, as Peter Garrett has said, um, extraordinarily and compellingly an absolute must-read. It's quite correct. Congratulations. Uh, I know it's going to have a telling contribution to what is going to be, I hope, a just outcome in the in the Timor Sea, in the Sunrise Field, but it does show that this has a long and not very proud history that Australia has undertaken in the process of achieving it. So congratulations, and I'm happy to launch Crossing the Line, Australia's Secret History in the Timor Sea by Kim McGrath.